What's going on, everyone? Jeremy here from The Quartering, and new information now trickling out about the onset incident with Alec Baldwin that um, left one film cinematographer no longer on this planet, and the director of the film, um, I think, still is laid up. What an absolute uh, disaster. I want to start off by saying uh, I understand why people are dunking on Alec Baldwin. And I suppose I should say that they have the right to. Um, although I have seen some disingenuous takes that I just, I don't feel awesome agreeing with. Um, you know, the idea that he was supposed to know um, or that you, you know, you don't point at another person. Well, yes, that is true in every scenario on the planet, um, probably except for on a movie set where you have somebody in charge of that and uh, you're supposed to have, uh, you know, the 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 um, fact of the matter is like you're not checking. I, I saw people saying, oh, I bet uh, Keanu Reeves checks every piece of munitions that are loaded. Come on. Come on. Thousands of rounds he goes through. You think he's inspecting each individual one? Of course not. And he's also pointing at other people. Um I, I mean, I know that people, you want to hate him, and I accept that, but he is not guilt-free in all of this, certainly. Um, the New York Post writes that he ignored the number one rule in safety. Um, so Alec Baldwin failed to follow the number one rule while on the set of Rust, the Hollywood expert tells. Um, loaded or unloaded, they never get pointed as an, at another human being. Um that seems impossible. I mean, there are movie sets where you have something pointed at somebody's head or your face. Uh, that That is the number one rule, except for on a movie set. Like, I know that it feels good to dunk on them. I'm just asking people to, to have a little bit of um, context here. Um, but what's interesting, though, is it had misfired twice on October 16th, once the week before according to an LA Times article, and the union worker said that Rust set had been plagued by safety issues, prompting them to walk out in the hours ahead of the event. The International Alliance of Theatrical Stage Employees also claimed that um, that she, ha she was hit by a live round, which never should have been on a film set, said former filmmaker and U.S. national expert, Peter Lake. Yeah, I, I would imagine. Again, I don't work in Hollywood, thankfully. Um, but yeah, the idea that there would ever be a live round anywhere uh, on a set seems bizarre to me. Uh, the other thing, you know, that makes me start to think is like, was somebody mad? And did they put a live round in there to scare somebody? Um, you know, what we're, what we're being told is that Alec was told that it was a cold uh, weapon by a crew member, while specific details of it remain unclear, including the tra trail of events that put the item in Baldwin's hands. Nonetheless, Carpenter said the weapon handled by Baldwin was obviously pointed at another human being. Um, yeah. A and again, would this have happened during like the next scene when they used it? Probably. You know, if the thing was sitting in there, I don't know why they would have sw swapped it out at any point. Our movie armorer and the assistant director who handed Alec the the item uh, after telling him that it was in fact loaded with blanks after the crew walked off the set over safety fears. Cold weapon, shouted Hales, a veteran assistant director who worked on Fargo and The Matrix Reloaded. Um... Yeah, I, I, I think the, probably one of the things is uh, there's a lot of rumors going around that this was like not didn't happen during the sequence of like filming that it happened like as an accident. Like, I don't know. The armor and assistant director handed off the a prop item to Alec have been identified after it was revealed that some crew members walked off the set of the movie Rust over safety concerns before the event took place. A search warrant released Friday said that the armorer Hannah Gutierrez laid out three props 
on a cart outside the filming location, and the first assistant director, Dave Halls, grabbed one from the cart, brought it inside to Baldwin, unaware that it was loaded with live rounds. Plural. Cold weapon shouted Halls before handling it to Baldwin, using the phrase to signal to cast and crew that it was safe to fire for the scene. Seconds later, filming a scene inside the Old West-style church, Baldwin apparently aimed towards the camera and pulled the trigger. Hmm. It was a, a vintage-style Colt revolver. Um, the movie set in 1880s Kansas. Cyrus Baldwin is the infamous outlaw Har Harlan Rust, whose grandson is sentenced to, uh, to hang for accidental. <laughs> That's ironic. Now, what's interesting to me is, you know, the more we find out, you know, was this put there by somebody who was disgruntled? It just seems like, is it that crazy to think, right? Like, it, if it shouldn't have been, the ammo shouldn't have been live in any scenario, then I would argue that someone put it there on purpose. And it must have been a pretty hot round, too, because it went through Hutchins, through her chest, and then hit the director behind her. After the event, the armorer took possession of it and the spent casing, which were turned over to PD, along with all the other props. Baldwin also charged out of the of the Western costume he was wearing, changed, sorry, which was stained with her blood and turned it over to police. Wow. Unionized workers had walked off the set hours before the event after they complained about long hours terrible conditions, and other, another safety incident involving two misfires. Was it another live round? Yet a named prop master who oversaw it, used in the, in the event, was non-union and who was, quote, just brought in to replace the workers who left after, over safety concerns. So did one of the workers... This is actually getting pretty deep. Did one of the workers who was upset about the safety concerns, decide to load an actual round in there. And what, you know, what kind of round was it? 45, probably if it was a Colt, right? Did he have, you know, 45 long Colt just laying around? Unionized employees had been complaining about the fact that they had to stay overnight in Albuquerque an hour's drive from the set and not Santa Fe because the production wouldn't pay for their hotels, according to the source. LA Times and multiple social media posts by film and TV insiders. When they turned up to set to clear their things on Thursday, they found they'd been replaced by locals. Ha! Anti-union? Anti-union activity, Alec Baldwin. Zoiks. It begs the question of who's those local workers were, what their training was, and to what extent did they check the item before it was handed to Baldwin? Deadline also cites an unnamed source who said it had gone off in a cabin while someone was holding it days prior. Well, again, it could go off a million times um, and it would be completely harmless because it should not have any real rounds in it. I have a problem with... You can see I'm literally on the show in New Mexico with him and the producers on that movie are treating local crew like garbage. I'm fighting to get my crew on this movie hotel rooms when we go too long and tired to drive the hour back from the location, Albuquerque, Albuquerque, they either say no or offer garbage roadside motel that's used as a homeless shelter. In fact, the line producer on the flick complained the motel she booked charges her $10 more per night than the homeless. They haven't even paid the crew a proper check. I had to sleep the night in my car Sunday night because they won't give a room and he was too tired to drive the hour home. Nobody on the production should have to sleep in the cold in their car at base camp um, to not risk something driving home. Interesting. The text message claims that Helena, uh, Halna, sorry, I'm probably mispronouncing, was one of the few people who decided to stay and not walk off. She belonged to the IATSC Local 600 and had been campaigning for better conditions for her team when the accident happened. One person who was involved in the production posted on social media that the crew had been sleeping in their cars on the movie set because they were often too tired to make the hour drive home. 
That's interesting. I'm really curious. I'm really curious to see if there's going to be more here. If somebody was mad about the conditions and they were like, hey, well, they won't fix us. This is what we're going to show them what happens. I don't think that. See, the thing is like, OK, let's just be let's let's just let's just do a little thought exercise here. I've never worked in Hollywood. I'm not a trained armorer. OK, but I'm pretty sure I would make sure that all the rounds on my set were blanks. And yes, you can tell the difference between them. It's very obvious, both in weight and physical appearance. So there is zero chance even an average person would make that mistake. I don't believe. That's kind of like your only job. The old-timey weapon misfiring, I'm not even worried about that. No one's going to get hurt by that, most likely. It's like, who put that live round in there? That's the question to me. Why were there live rounds sorting with the non-live rounds? And did the person who handed it to him know that there was no live round? It's going to be interesting to see how this shakes out as the investigation continues, because I think there's more to know here. I hope you enjoyed this video. We'll talk to you again real soon.